Peter, why don't you run through for us some of the actual measures that passed in the House last week? There's one about gun magazines, one about background checks, one about uh, concealed weapons on college campuses and a fee, uh, just to inform our listeners. So what's up with the first one, the, um, the limit on gun magazines? Yeah, that's probably the most controversial of the four bills that have actually been introduced at this point. Basically, it started as a bill to um, ban what they call high-capacity ammunition magazines, not clips for all you listening. They're What's magazines. the difference? Honestly, I can't even tell you. All I know is I got an AP directive that said never use clips anymore, huh. only use magazines. Um, but anyway, that's uh, it started to ban 10 or more rounds. Um, They've, it's since been amended to 15 or more rounds. Um, and uh, no, I mean, you laugh, but like the quibbling over that number has dominated a lot of the debate. Um, now they want to try to push it up to 20 because that's what a lot of law enforcement officials walk around with. Um, but that, that's been the most controversial because that's an outright ban on these magazines that there are literally millions and millions of them in circulation. Yeah. They don't even know, but just millions and millions. For about $3, you could go to a Home Depot and make a high-capacity magazine. Yeah, well, yeah there's can... also, I was reading in Wired that there's, there's a group that um, <clears throat> are leasing 3D printers and have successfully printed I, yeah. at home um, magazine. I saw that. And yeah. so, you know, so the argument is that what they call, and I actually sat down with uh, uh, David Keene, the uh, president of the NRA, a couple weeks ago, and he called all bills such as this feel good legislation. Yeah, right. Makes the legislators feel good because in the end, you're not going to be taking magazines out of circulation. You're not going to. Well, and, and it's also the quibbling over, over a number. True. You know, it's, I mean, it's really, it's kind of moot. But, but, but whether it's 10 time, or 12. You know, or, no matter how hard it will be to enforce it because. You know, like you said, uh, James Holmes, the Aurora theater shooter, he ordered his online, right? Yeah, Isn't sure. that where he got yeah. his? But the, the, the horror and the shock of both of those shootings in Sandy Hook and the Aurora theater was because of the just sheer amount of efficiency that these killers could go in because they had so many, um, so many rounds in their magazine. But uh, we'll circle back around to this because okay. there is the... Um, uh, the Magpul, the, the magazine clip Indeed. maker in Colorado that's been raising a stink about this very issue. So that's the most controversial one. But this one, the next one about background checks seems to be the least controversial on me. It, to you, um, it's um, <laughs> definitely had a lot of controversy as well at the Capitol. Um, this is basically, we're talking universal background. Is that what we're on now or the fee? Uh, yeah, the required background checks for yeah. all gun transactions. Yeah, so this is the universal background check. And basically what it's trying to do is close a loophole in Colorado right now. You do not need to conduct a background check for private firearm sales. I see. So if you have a Craigslist sale, essentially, you know, you wouldn't need to do a background check. Uh, selling to a family member, a friend, a neighbor, something like that. You would, right now don't have to do a background check. Uh, this bill would close that loophole and mandate that everybody no matter what sale and transfer um of a firearm you would need to do a background check. what are they looking for though i mean obviously like if you've had uh, if you have a felony right and f yeah felony. i mean the governor on tuesday night at a panel discussion pointed out that the state has caught 46 felons who foolishly tried to purchase a gun using the background checks out. But, you know, the opponents are just going to argue, are criminals going to be lining up to do background checks? Yep. You know, is a father who's selling a gun to his son or transferring a gun to his son, are they going to go to... Yeah, through but, a background I, but, it, check. but it's interesting because I've done background checks on people all the time. You just go onto the Colorado Bureau of Investigation website and it's as long as you have their name, birth date, and social security number... For like six bucks, yeah. you can get background well, checks. I did them all the time. And these that... have to be done by an FFL, which okay. is a federally issued. Because they're looking, it's a, it's a Colorado, it's the, the CBI in... is only Colorado. Right. This would be looking at nationally. Yeah, well, it would require you to do a background check that goes through the CBI, which accesses the InstaCheck system, which is also federal. So um, basically, it would, basically, what they're trying to do is is get more people to go through these background checks. Uh, you do have to go to a licensed FFL, which is you, any gun dealer. Yep. Usually, any gun dealer usually can do them. But you wouldn't just be able to like at, 
as a father, if you're transferring a gun to your son, just do a background check at home. You would have to actually go to a licensed, authorized I see. Check so let's button. talk about this other bill then, the one that would impose a fee for gun buyers to cover the cost of their background checks. How, how does it work now, and what would this actually do? Right now, there is no fee. Um, it's just part of your right as a Colorado citizen. If you lay down the 400 450 bucks to buy you know, a Smith & Wesson M&P-issued 40 cal Well, that just rolls off your, your tongue. Your, <laughs> back, your background <laughs> check is on the house. Yeah, <laughs> this would um, require a fee of about ten to twelve dollars. They're estimating um, to recoup the cost, and this is coming back about because there has been a massive jamming of the CBI uh, background check system uh, since uh, the Aurora massacre, exacerbated by the Newtown incident. Um, and people fearing, and this is nationally, people fearing people that want new, guns. new um, legislation people, nationally and in the state are going to come around. And that actually it like overloaded the system overloaded. at the CBI, right? Well, federal law requires it, oh man, I think it's three days. I could be wrong about that. But it's with it's less than five days to, to respond to the background mm-hmm. check to get an answer. Uh, they're looking at 10, 11 days now. So this is actually... <laughs> caused the, the, the influx has caused the state to be out of line with federal law on the issue. And so they're thinking if we can charge a fee, we can have more yeah. resources to ease the And backlog. how upset are opponents about this particular um, They're pretty upset because this one goes specifically to Second Amendment issues. They're thinking you as an American have a Second Amendment right to carry a gun. You cannot charge a fee then t- to require somebody to go th- jump through the hoops to access your right so yeah uh the second amendment folks are uh they're up in arms so. I, have the, I have the right to own a car but i have to pay for registration annually for that yep you know i well, mean fees are just sort of part of the deal like it, i don't feel like it's in and if, and if it's uh, only 10 to 12 bucks it's not like you know that's obviously what the democrats have been ordering uh, arguing they're also pointing out that if you have the five hundred dollars to lay down for a handgun, right. you probably could spend ten, twelve dollars on a background. Yeah, because check. right now the cost and the burden is on the state to actually pay for all of these background checks. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, that's. It's so funny because you know the conservatives don't want the state to pay for anything. It should be the onus is on the individual, right? But this, it's in this really case, really funny you say that. In this that. case, it's like flipped. It's, it's like no, no, the that. state should subsidize my background You are check. so dead on because during the uh, debate, the Republicans said, well, I, I, I don't, it didn't go through, but there was an amendment offered that would have, if you fell within a certain level of the federal poverty level, uh, there should be a subsidy. <laughs> I'm not kidding for your background check. And, you know, a lot of Democrats pointed out the irony, which is that sure. we're trying to expand Medicaid right now in Colorado, which has <laughs> Republicans just going insane um, because it's a entitlement program that right. they think needs to be cut. Right. So, Well, and, and there's a lot of irony all around because the last measure of these four that passed was a uh, was one that at the state level would ban concealed weapons on college campuses, which has been getting kicked around in the courts for the past year or more because of the Supreme Court challenge to the University of Colorado's ban on guns on campus, which the Supreme Court actually said, no, actually, you can have guns on campus, but now they're trying to go and um, pass this measure. The Supreme Court was very clear. They felt that the CU Board of Regents was overstepping its authority by doing so, and and they were clear, and Representative Claire Levy, a Democrat from Boulder, she um, is trying to uh, make it so that it's not ambiguous, so that the Supreme Court doesn't even have to rule. It's just cut dry in state law. This is banned on college campuses. Yep. And... uh, She's obviously uh, receiving some resistance. So this, what this would do is say on any state college campus, so right. we're talking University of Colorado, CSU, right. um, what other ones are there out there, the major ones, you know, Minus. Uh, the community colleges, places like it, that? It wouldn't be a mandate. It would allow those universities to decide. I see. So uh, those boards would be able to, because the Supreme Court said those boards would be overstepping their authority by doing so. This bill would say, would create legal language so that they could enforce those, those bans. So I always, I always, and you need to clarify this for me. 
I always get confused when we're talking about concealed. It's just concealed. So if it's not concealed, you can still have it on campuses. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think there's like some confusion. No, you're there. right. I mean, technically, you can open carry in Colorado. Right. Um, so As long as you have a permit. No. You do not need a permit to open carry in Colorado. Huh. You, so you go by the gun and you can just walk down the street. It's it in and your if hand. you have it, it happens. strapped to your belt, it's only when it's, it's concealed it's only that you need concealed a permit. Really? You need a permit. Yeah, I swear to God. Um, I was driving into a family campground and there was, I swear, the kid was 12. And then another child with him was probably like nine. And he's just walking down the road with his 45 in his hand. And it was the most frightening like i wanted to duck down my windows when i drove past them because it's like a 12 year old alone without like parental supervision wielding literally well, pr private businesses can and like for instance starbucks there was like a couple a year or so ago a couple years ago i can't remember there was like a big rally by gun rights folks at a starbucks they had an open carry rally because Starbucks had said we don't want guns on our premises. Sure. And they held an open carry rally there. But like Starbucks has said, we're cool. We don't need a bunch of guns in our <laughs> store. So yeah. they, but yeah, they, yeah. I mean, I don't, you raise a good point. Tech, see, the universities would be able to, though, with this bill, just do a ban on guns on campus. They're okay. They're focusing on concealed carry because that's, you know, what most people do. But they could do a ban. And then in that case, it, even if you were open carry, you would not be able to. But right. The bill is crafted towards concealed carry. So. Yeah, okay. so let's step back a minute and look at the, at the larger picture here. The, these four bills pass the, the House. They still have to go on to the Senate. One of the things that's interesting to me is the reason why the, any of these bills or any of these measures have passed so far and look like there are several of them on, on their way to the governor's desk is because of the, the majority that Democrats now hold in the House and Senate here in Colorado uh, which is pretty extraordinary considering that just uh, 10 years ago you would never have imagined such a, uh, such a large majority for Democrats well, holding both. this is all interconnected. So the reason the Democrats have a majority now is because Democrats did an excellent job last year. One reason, I should say, they did an excellent job last year of painting this uh, war on women by Republicans. Um, which is that there was all these rape comments from Republicans, sure. legitimate rape, you know, things like that, that um, raised flags. Democrats were smart. They turned it into a war on women waged by Republicans. Now the Republicans are trying to turn the table by saying it is a war on women by Democrats through the gun control debate yeah. because uh, Representative Joe Salazar um, he's a Democrat. On uh, Friday night, he made a controversial statement alluding to the fact that women uh, on college campuses who are carrying weapons could feel like they're in a position where they might be raped when in the actuality that wasn't the case. They get scared. They pull out their gun. They pop off a round, and they could potentially injure someone. He admits it was not the best worded um, argument. Yeah, but the but the uh, conservative punditry just uh, went they, crazy about it. I mean, I saw it everywhere. Oh God! And so so if I get it right, I mean, what they're saying is uh, that here's this guy Joe Salazar that says that what women shouldn't have guns because they don't know how to control their That's weapons what, when men do. That is what. And so, like I said, they turn the table on this war on women argument. You have now all these female re re Republicans and conservatives saying, oh, the liberals don't think that women are capable of knowing when they're in a dangerous situation, knowing when they might be raped and are there and capable of defending themselves without injuring someone. So they've kind of yeah. turned, turned Well, it seems the discussion. like Salazar's mistake was to even mention, allow the word rape to come out of his lips at all, he because that it. is just like... Yeah, you know, why would you? I mean, you would want to avoid that at any cost. He admits it, but yeah. I mean, but he he was responding to the right. arguments from conservatives saying that it's a safety issue for right. women on campuses, right. especially you know in CU Boulder, right. women there's been uh, cases of rape, right. and that women don't feel safe, but if they can conceal carry, then they would feel right. safe, mm -hmm. and that he was he was just trying to make this 
really convoluted. It, it was a statement. convoluted point that, you know, maybe guns aren't the best form of self-defense. Maybe, you know, call boxes, rape whistles, you know, mace, things like that are better. Brass knuckles. Because if you make the mistake, uh, probably not going to kill somebody with those is the point he was making. With the whistle? <laughs> with the whistle. <laughs> probably no, not. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> You get really close with that whistle, you never know. Pop in your depends on, depends on if, if they're wearing a uh, crystal helmet. <laughs> there was actually a 